Well, good morning. Hello there, everybody. Welcome here or welcome back, whatever the case may be. I apologize for any noise. They're doing some work in the apartment next door, and you can hear some hammering and different things going on. So it is what it is. I can't control that. I'm not going to wait till another time. I'm just going to sit here, have my, I love my dog coffee. And my, I love my dog coffee mug. And I am going to be having a cigarette too, because that's what I do. And I may or may not cut this out. I, <laughs> it becomes a challenge after a while to, to try and deal with all of these things. But I, um, I, I had forgotten my keys. I, my keys stay attached to my purse all the time. They're on a lanyard and I put it over the chain and it goes through both. They're very secure. They're not going to just fall off of there. And then I was up here. I took Scooby out. I was outside. I was going to come back in and I went, where are my keys? My keys never come off of here. And I looked around outside thinking, did I unhook them and not remember? Because that would just be a dumbass thing to do. So I wouldn't put it past me. And I ended up having to carry Scooby, go all the way around to the front so I could buzz myself in over my, my phone. And I got in and I came upstairs thinking, well, they must be upstairs. And I looked everywhere up here and I was tearing things apart. No sign of them. And I'm like, what would I do with them? And I just put it out of my head going, well, maybe it'll come to me. And it didn't, but the office called up and said, are you missing your keys? And I said, yes, I have no idea what happened to them. It's driving me crazy. And they said, yes, I saw them in your mailbox. So what I had done was I went down to check the mail and I unlocked the, the mailbox and I pulled the mail out because I hadn't checked the mail in a couple of weeks. It was full of a lot of junk. There was really only one actual piece of mail and that was for Denis. And I had pulled everything out, went and sorted out the stuff and I guess I just left the mailbox open with my keys in them and thus absolutely forgot my keys. And the office went down and they were doing something, checking their own mail for something and noticed them in there. So they called me and, and now I will run down and grab them the next time I go down. But mystery solved, but oh my God, what a dumbass move that was. I can't believe it. Just left them in the mailbox, like mailbox unlocked and door open for the mailbox. Yeah, that's a new one. That's a first. So I hope everybody's having a great day. I um, The weather here is really nice. It's, it's cloudy. It's a little overcast. The sky that we do see is nice and blue. It's a little bit muggy. And that just means it's a little sticky in the air. You know, so like the humidity presses in on you a little bit. And that's the mugginess factor. I don't know if everybody says that. I grew up with, you know, muggy being a like an expression. And I suddenly realize now that I've started thinking about things that I grew up with just going, well, just everybody says this and everybody knows that this means this and that's not true. Things are regional. They're by country, by area of country, area of city sometimes. So there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, what is a common usage of a parlance. I don't even know if I use that right. You know, I'm not trying to be show off -y. There's just a lot of words in my head that I know that I like, and I try to use them as frequently as I can so that I don't lose them. But it's not that I'm trying to be um, show off -y or anything of that nature. I just really, really, really enjoy and appreciate words when they can be used effectively. But I am working on what I was doing with... Uh, with one of my videos when I was doing the nobody does it better video with the spies. Well, you 
don't even know that part yet, probably. Um, because the song is from The Spy Who Loved Me, I thought, well, it would be good to do something about, you know, spies. I was going to tell a little story about spies or something. So I went into my, my Bing AI creator program thing online and I started looking for some spy images and things that I wanted to get that way and so I took a video of me going in to create those at the time just to see what that was going to be like and I ended up not even going with that idea because I did not get the pictures and the variety of pictures specifically that I was looking for, like not even in a way to go in a different direction and keep the same kind of theme like I normally do. Because I've never been able to get, even with the Puff the Magic Dragon where I came a little bit close, you know, try as I may, I could not get the AI to perch Jackie Paper on Puff the Magic Dragon's tail. I always stuck him elsewhere. And I was very specific with things like that. So I thought, well, it might be fun to see the process or show the process of me trying to come up with images to tell the story before I make the videos. And in this case, from the time I was setting up to make it and I was going to show how I made it, I ended up not even going with that particular spy theme. I just took some ballroom like a bride and groom or couple or something in, in big elaborate gowns and, and, and suits and tuxes and had them try to sort of dance around the floor because I had no idea what I was doing there. And I practice things. I, I try something I don't know how to do. I practice it, see what's wrong with it. And in that case, I discovered that the dancers, when I was moving them around, sometimes when they cross in front of another group, the image was in front. Sometimes when they passed behind other people, the image went behind. And it all depends on where they're layered. And so I tried to, you know, decrease the value of them when they were going by and it, it really wasn't very effective, but I, I learned a lot from the process, which is what I do. So that the next time I was doing things, I knew to clip those and move the, the composition around in front of other ones so that they would um, be in front when they were supposed to be and be behind the other ones when they were supposed to be, which is a lot more work even. Uh, but it was, you know, it was telling and I, I learned something and it was still not very, not a very good video. But they take a long time when you don't know what you're doing. And I figure all of these things will get faster and become better and more effective as I learn the skills that I need to learn. But right now, things are what they are. And I don't even have anything specific to talk about today. I just, I just feel that sometimes when I'm doing these things, I, I feel more withdrawn and a little bit disconnected from, from you all, the way I was feeling when I first sort of discovered y'all. And that is all on me, that is, that is my fault. So I am trying, as I learn all of these things, to include people and make sure I can respond to everyone that I want to respond to, which is everyone. Sometimes people fall through the cracks. I just discovered that there are comments on my channel from a year ago that I didn't know were there. I hadn't seen them for some reason. They slipped through the cracks. I never responded to them. You know, some of them were very nice anyway, so I don't really care. Uh, but I, I ended up going in and, and looking up the up comments and then there's comments that are under things that are filtered out that I had no idea were there or that they were filtered out for that matter. And some of them didn't really deserve to be, so I went in and actually allowed them. Um, so much after the fact, a year later, go in and allow them. Um, some I responded to because I felt they deserved a response. And it was nice because after a year, I said, I'm sorry that it took so long to get back to you. 
but it was nice because they sent me a message back thanking me for, you know, reminding them to go and check out my channel because a lot's changed over the past year. And I just appreciate all of you out there, everybody that, you know, takes the time to, to send a comment, you know, genuine questions, no matter how unflattering, I don't consider rude or um, inappropriate. The only time I have issue is when somebody is purposefully trying to be rude or ignorant, because there's no need to, to do that. But all genuine questions, however naive or sometimes inadvisable, I've been known to ask questions that in hindsight, when I look back, uh, perhaps I could have found a different way to get that information than to ask who and the way I did. But at no point am I ever asking questions to put somebody on the spot or to make them uncomfortable or to be condescending. It's just a genuine question that pops into my head and sometimes without filtering through everything I I um I just ask the questions I'm doing this like I'm typing a question I'm talking in real life I will do the same thing it doesn't change anything my online personality and my real world personality or offline personality or however you want to refer to these things is very consistent I am the same everywhere I can't believe it's like 12 minutes of me going to have a cigarette and I still haven't lit it, so I'm going to do that now. So what I end up with is when I have like a cigarette or something, it's like you have the cigarette out here, so I will put something over it to make it look like something else. So when you see a random bird down here at the screen or a Scooby pop in, not always, but sometimes, and the way it kind of started is me trying to hide a cigarette that just happens to be sitting here even though the rest of me is just talking and I'm not paying any attention to it and whatnot and this is just doing its thing. Okay, let's see what I do with that now. But I'm certainly not going to talk all day. I don't know if I even completed my thought on some of these things. I, um, I'm trying to work on a, a disco inferno now because I am really enjoying the disco music. It is my era. I, having been born in the 60s, I was too young for 60s music to be my thing, but I do appreciate it in somewhat of a retro way. But 70s music... That's when I turned, you know, the ages, well, technically speaking, 5 to 15 for that whole decade. But 1975 was when I started reading, you know, a lot more adult novels, um, Anne Rice, Stephen King, um, I think Clive Barker was later, I think it was the 80s for Clive Barker. But I distinctly recall reading Stephen King in the 70s and Interview with the Vampire literally in 1975 when it came out and I carried the hardcover book with me everywhere. And it was heavy. <laughs> so on top of anything else that I was carrying anywhere, I had to carry that big heavy book. Because I had... Um, I did enjoy the, the Vampire Chronicles from Anne Rice. Uh, in particular, Interview with the Vampire, that, that certainly was my favorite. But my favorite story or book novel um, by Anne Rice was The Witching Hour. And that is because of the way it was written. It spanned multiple sort of centuries, generations, time periods, whatever, and each time period that was talked, now it wasn't written necessarily in old fashioned speak, but it, it really, the way it was written and the language used did reflect and exemplify the time periods very, very well. And I thought it was really, really remarkable piece of storytelling in the way it was done. 
kind of in a similar way to I love the movie The Cook, The Thief, um, His Wife and Her Lover because of the way it was filmed. The storyline itself, kind of crazy. Costumes were spectacular done by, was it Jean-Paul Gaultier? Something like that. It was a, it was a, it was a known designer. But each location within this restaurant, okay, I guess there was just outside the restaurant, there was the dining room, the kitchen, the bathroom. But it's been a long time since I saw it. But these are the things that stood out to me at the time and that I that I remember. Even if it's inaccurately, it's how I remember it. And the costumes, like say, we'll take like just the female lead and she's in a costume and she's in the, the dining room. And so it's there, it's a certain color scheme. She, wearing the same costume, goes into the kitchen. It's the same costume, but in a different color, matching the color scheme of the kitchen. Like it's really like the, the level of details for those kind of things was remarkable to me. I barely understand it now when people can put a color wash into things, <laughs> but to put that kind of detail in as it's either being written or planning to be filmed or anything is, it, it's just, it's just crazy detailed and, and so awesome to me. And I try to note things like that. So I found that, um, and again, I would have read The Witching Hour before I ever saw that movie. But they are similar into what I like about them. It's like how they take an environment or a period and they show that by more than just what is said. It is how it is said, how it is described, how it is shown. Um, and it adds so many extra layers. And there's not a lot of films where I find you know, such obvious layers, like there's a lot of things hidden in movies when you're watching and, you know, you go back or somebody else will point it out and you go back and you look at it and go, oh my God, I had no idea. Or you will pick them up as you go along, but maybe you'll miss elements of it. So I do appreciate when other people do, you know, video essays and things on these stories that I like because they will find details because they're looking for them. They are going in specifically to do that in a way I am not. I casually watch something, I note what I note, and later on I try to recall it to the best of my ability. But for the most part, I just move on to other things. There's not a lot of movies I re-watch, so there's probably a list of maybe 10 to 15, and we're talking that's out of thousands, that I have re-watched in my life. Most things, if I get through them once, I don't have time for anything other than to move on to the next thing because there's always going to be more than I will ever have time to get through. <laughs> so those are those are a little more of my philosophies. So there's a little more honest tea because I don't know how to serve anything other than honest tea. And I'm hoping that a friend of mine can help me write a, I don't want the word jingle, it's not a jingle, but a hook to lead into my um, honest tea over coffee, honest tea over whatever it's over videos. Um, but I haven't asked him yet. I know he writes music. I get to use some of it in the films that I haven't yet, but I get to, and that's, that's really nice. And I will plug his channel as soon as I can remember what it's called. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm, I'm so bad for certain things like that. And I guess I shall say goodbye until the next time. As always, take care of yourselves and each other. <laughs>